thought like you were looking fly you saw us we're looking fly and we thought let's hang out I mean uh, you know, that's you that's kind of how it happens usually yeah yeah okay good um who else welcome did you are you here with a friend yay good good friend to have oh anyone else how'd you get here I was riveting Oh, fun. Oh, wonderful. What's your name? Scott, nice to meet you. Which one did you listen to me on? Okay, yeah. I thought that was actually, I thought that was actually a good conversation. Oh, really? Okay, good, yeah. I've, I talked about some stuff that I never talk about on that podcast, so I thought that was, that was good. Um, okay, anyone else? Oh, welcome. You've done kundalini yoga before, though? Okay. Welcome to Rama. Glad you're here. And somebody else over here. The people usually who are smart and new, they like to sit behind this, and I just, you know, you won't, I'll never see you. Um, <laughs> no, that's great. Okay. Okay. Bring the palms together. Inhale. Exhale. Om Namo Guru
planning of the some of the details of this German and Swiss tour always ends up sounding like this and then we'll have to ditch a car in Zurich <laughs> I'm like I'm like Shiva said so last night we were trying to find wait, I want to go to St. Germain's alchemical laboratory which is really the whole reason we're going and she's like I don't think we have time for it you know it just like between the, the dates in Hamburg and the you know this and the that and 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 she was like we would have to drive up because it's up it's north of Hamburg where this whole St. Germain kind of area is um, so we'd have to drive there spend the night go to the alchemical laboratories and some of these other esoteric um, uh, sites jump in a car drive six hours south to Cologne and then ditch the car in Cologne. And I was like, Shemapri, does it always have to be that we're ditching cars somewhere? And then, and then when we were trying to figure out, because we have to, this is a weird situation, but we have to, because in Zurich, we have like this very strange pattern to get back um, to Rome, which is another story, but we have to go through Venice, but we're only going to be in Venice for, and she's like, I'm going to have to ditch a bag in Zurich. I'm like, this is just a yoga tour. Every time you talk about this, it sounds like we're up to no good. Um, <laughs> we're ditching bags in Zurich, cars in Cologne, like, you know. Um, so if you don't ever see us again, I mean, you know, it was nice knowing you. Um, I, saw, I saw a picture of uh, Pritam Shanti Gurujas's daughter at a Malibu kind of Easter egg hunt. And at, at first look, it just looks like, you know, like Pritam Shanti with her Easter egg basket. Like it doesn't like look like, the, you know, it's just sort of regular. It's like, oh yeah, cute. And then you zoom in and behind Pritam Shanti, like a whole football field uh, away. She's not, she's two. She's two because now we have to pay for the flight. Yeah, I remember now. Um, I'm like, I'm like, she's yeah, two. She, she we got her, we got her out of. Which she, she ditched Mallorca before she turned two, so we didn't have to pay for that flight. But yeah, now she's two. Um, so she's two, and we were, we were, you know, she was up in Malibu. And um, if you zoom in, the, all behind her, like a football field, is a bunch of parents with their kids, like really close to them, and looking, you know, kind of scared, right? Um, and then there's Pritam Shanti, a whole football field in front of them and you zoom in and she in her whole basket is overflowing with eggs <laughs> she's basically cleared the place out <laughs> while the kids are still trying to figure out what you do <laughs> um, so you know happy easter um so this morning I'd like to do some things. So being my mom became a born again christian uh, a, a jew for jesus when bob dylan did um, so I've always, which is true, in the mid 80s, Bob Dylan became a, a, a Christian and so did my mom. It was like the thing to do. Um, so when she was baptized, she, you know, she, my Jewish mother, um, passed out, was speaking in tongues. Um, and, you know, that's how normal my childhood was. Um, and so I've always been interested in the kind of uh, mysticism around how all these things kind of fit together. And um, so I've studied a lot of this particular subject. 
subject. Um, and one of the kind of themes that run through all of the mythologies of the kind of uh, resurrection mythologies throughout all of these kind of mythos, because we also have a resurrection mythology in the um, uh, Sikh tradition where Guru Nanak actually comes after three days and three nights, they couldn't find him. Um, and the, the, you know, his followers were concerned about his whereabouts and they, they didn't have the find your phone app at that point. Um, and you know, they have a find your Fitbit app too. We've used it. Um, Shabit Preet saved my life with that find your Fitbit app. Of course it was underneath my car where it was supposed to be. Um, and so <laughs> Because I'm stumbling home the high from Kundalini, um, I just left it under my car. Uh, so, um, so they didn't have that, you know, find your phone app. So um, three days, and he came up out of the water, and he was chanting some of these mantras that a lot of these mantras that we chant in a, a form called Japji. And so these run through, these resurrection kind of themes run through all sorts of mythos. And um, the Yogi Bhajan gave this teaching. He said that the whole kind of game here on this planet is that if you are transactory, so if you're here for a transaction, then you're going to uh, end up with zero. If you're here for resurrection or if you're resurrectory, then you're going to have all the riches and the knowledge and the wisdom and the enjoyment of the great plentiful universe. So that's the kind of that that's the difference. And um, somebody was telling me at dinner last night, which by the way, you know, we had this white tantric yoga and we're rolling deep. Um, and uh, w w we go over to this restaurant and we meditated all day. It wasn't bad though. If they would have said we had to have that third 62 minute meditation, I would have been like enough already. But um, we, we had five and if we'd have had, if we had six, I would have been like, um, but five I was fine with, well, especially because I was partnered with Mikhail, um, Mikhail, our um, Navy SEALs guy, and he, w I mean, literally almost broke every single one of my fingers. <laughs> Because we had to, we had to hold each other's, you know, thumbs, and in, and I was like, and at one point I was like, like giving him the wiggle symbol, like you know, come on, Mikel, like loosen it up a little bit, because he was like, <laughs> like that with me, and I was like, is he gonna kill me or? This is like getting hot in here. I'm like, does he love me or is he going to kill me? Um, you know, it's a, it's a fine line, as all of us know. Um, so, so, you know, he had a hold of the fingers. And every, I mean, literally no circulation for 62 minutes on every single finger. So I thought, you know, I can't handle it. I, I might not live through another 62 minutes. It was, it was. So then, you know. You do this kind of, you, you're, you're moving your magnetic field in a very specific way, and it was full moon yesterday. We have an auspicious kind of window here, which is why we're going to do this meditation this morning. But you move the thing a certain way, you're, you're vibing, you're vibrating. So we roll into the restaurant, and Sean Penn is there. And um, he is gawking at us. And I'm like, Sean Penn, relax. <laughs> Can you, you know? And so then he like, go, he literally, and how did you even laughing? He's like, he's like, we're not looking at Sean Penn. Sean Penn is looking at us. <laughs> so he goes out and he literally sits in front of us in the window and smokes a cigarette and just stares at us. <laughs> you, you <laughs> it was hilarious. He positioned himself so he could just stare at us. Uh, and it, it was like, you know, that's, that's, you know that's, that's how the thing goes because the aura is so magnetic. That's, that's the whole thing. So if you have the resurrectory power, think about this. All the times in your life that you have resurrected from some sort of um, uh, death experience, some sort of heartbreak, some sort of uh, change, transition, transformation, and that resurrection, it, the power of that personal will is the whole game on this planet. That's it. And so Yogi Bhajan, I'll, I'll read it to you, but Yogi Bhajan's like, you know, a lot of Jesus's followers, you know, um, or people who ask me these questions, like, um, why, if Jesus was so powerful, why could, why didn't he stop the crucifixion? You know, these types of, of you know, he would get, people would ask him all sorts of stuff. Um, and he was like, and his whole point was that the, the, it was a symbolic kind of, I mean, it was, you know, what, however you want to define real, but it was a symbolic experience of um, defining what it looks like in a very extreme way to be able to resurrect yourself. And then he went off to um, Kashmir and spent another hundred years uh, 
studying yogic science. So, you know, his, they have a whole tomb for him in Kashmir. You know, we know that, right? Yeah? No? That's where we get all of it. We know a lot of these crystals that we get, not and Andrea's crystals are of a different sort, but some of these crystals we haul back from um, Dharmasala, those crystals are all from Kashmir and Mount Kailash, both of those places. Um, so yeah, Yogi Bhajan was like this, the, you know, he, he went through that exercise, which was a little extreme, and then he needed like 100 years to recover in Kashmir do, and do yoga. He needed a hundred year yoga retreat after that. <laughs> you know what? You, you millennials know what I'm talking about. Um, okay, so we're going to. This is old now, but did you see that Miley Cyrus um, millennial, uh, you know, workplace video on Saturday Night Live? No? Oh, you guys have to watch it. It's so funny. She basically, she's, you know, there's like three millennials and they're talking to their boss who's not a millennial. And, they're, and, and one is like, um, I need a promotion. And. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy's like, I'm sorry, I don't think I've ever met you. How long have you lived here? I mean, worked here. And he was, and she's like, three days. Um, and he's like, well, what are you doing here? She's like, I'm a content creator. Um, <laughs> it goes down like that. But then Miley Cyrus comes in and she's like, her character's like, you know, I just like need a couple of weeks off to go to the south of France to like do yoga. <laughs> You know, it's like that. So he needed a hundred year um, yoga retreat to get over that whole um, resurrection stunt that he pulled. Um, this is this is from a Sufi Hebrew. So this is a, he's he's basically a Sufi mystic, but his he's a PhD in Hebrew, Aramaic, and um, uh, what's is the third language? Not English, something else. Um, but he, he, his body of work is all taking the Aramaic and translating it into a, a way that's maybe not as politically and um, control, you know, the control ma matrix of the Vatican and all that kind of stuff. So he says this. He says, the breath, the wind, and the spirit. This is a translation of the last part of Jesus' advice to Nicodemus. He says, it's not quite the same in the King James Version. He says, the breath, the wind, and the spirit obey their own mysterious moods and their own harmonious laws. When you hear their voices and feel their touch, you know they exist without a doubt, but you do not understand how they come together, how they rise and fall as they pass over and through the earth. Just as mysterious seems the movement and the purpose of every human being who has returned to the source and has been reborn from the great dark through the power of breath and of spirit. So that's kind of what we're working on today. I want you to have the power to, from wherever you are in whatever moment you're having in whatever challenges, the ebb and the flow, you have the power, the, the personal power, because it's the will. It's your, your will um, relating to, and you could say even um, in diagonal, in the diagonal, your will in the diagonal to what is called the universal will or God's will or whatever you want to call that. And in the kind of uh, uh, apex of that is your consciousness and your destiny. And when you have that power, you can, um, you can do anything. You have personal power to move yourself out of any situation or any challenge. And then also you start to look at life very differently because all suffering is uh, related to feeling like we're in a moment that we can't get out of. We can't rise above. We can't move past. We can't forget. We can't forgive. We can't, we can't transform. That's all suffering. We get that. It's that simple. All suffering is feeling and believing that you're limited to this kind of one experience or one um, uh, uh, perspective on the experience, and then it's not going to change. And so if you have the resurrectory power and you're not looking looking at everything for a transaction, which is hard for Westerners. This is really difficult for us. We're always looking for a transaction. That's what the way that we're, that's the how the kind of control consumer consumption matrix has been defined. And you could call it the patriarchy, you could call it lots of different things, but that's how it's been installed in us that we're always looking, I'm going to give you this and then you're going to give me that. And that's why our, we're having a little problem in the realm of relationships. Because that that's not the way relationships work. 
but we, you know, we're, we might work this out. We'll see. But that's not the way relationships work. That's not the way anything works. So, you know, when you start to develop this power to raise yourself up out of your own chaos or out of the chaos of your problems or out of the limitations that you've kind of um, forgotten that it's a very, it's very simple. It's just that you, you think the door's locked and it's actually not locked. I mean, there's all sorts of very simple metaphors for this. You think the door's locked and it's not locked. You think that, and I was reading something Yogi Bhajan was saying because I'm obsessed with these um, teachings. These are all sacred heart teachings that are from a channel who channeled. She had a Jesus came to her in her art studio and she channeled, um, I mean, well, she didn't channel. He came to her and spoke to her basically for, you know, a couple years and asked her to write this book, which I've studied endlessly. It's called Love Without End. And I've studied endlessly over the past 20 years years. Um, and the, the, all these teachings are sacred heart teachings, but Yogi Bhajan, those of you who are into the Kundalini yoga, Yogi Bhajan, I was reading something and I've never heard him say it like this before, but I was reading something this week of his teachings where he said, I'm just a, I'm just a student of the sacred heart. I'm just, I'm just a sacred heart student. So that was, I thought that was very interesting. But um, these, these teachings from, you know, this kind of experience this woman had with whatever you want to call Christ consciousness, although it was an apparition of an actual, you know, Jesus type figure. Um, sh- all of the teachings are about the wholeness of love and how the wholeness of love will bring you out of any situation because the structure or the uh, way that we think that things even time is, is uh, from a, a, the po- viewpoint of horizontal kind of um, structure and structure will never uh, win. The only thing that will win is the wholeness of love. But we have, you know, we, we got to prove that to ourselves over and over again. We're very stubborn. So I'd like us to work a little bit to develop this power. And the meditation we're going to do this morning is this meditation, which is interesting. It actually is very complementary to this white tantric yoga we did yesterday because um, you're going to work with each of these fingers. And he said, our nervous systems are so weak. We've completely, we've completely been uh, just you know, in our own experience divorced from our actual personal power because the nervous system is so weak. So when the nervous system gets stronger, then you, you know, you, you start to little by little be able to pull you out, pull pull you, pull yourself out of your depression, pull yourself out of your anxiety, pull yourself out of your, you know, um, collusions in your relationships, your things that you always fight about in your relationships, pull yourself out of the same thing, that cycle of the same thing that keeps on happening. Um, like I said to that girl, is she here? Who is here on Wednesday night? I don't think she'll ever come back. Um, but you know, I always, I always, when somebody is complaining about something, I always ask them, you know, lowest common denominator. Has this happened before? You got to ask yourself because she was talking about a boss, but I have a lot, there's a lot of these people that come around who talk about the job and it's always the same person who's always in a new job having the same problem. Always. So, you know, lowest common denominator. And so then if you're working with your own power to transform that, that those collusions, those, that power to transform your, you know, sufferings, then you become, you become a very, very, very powerful sovereign human being. So I'd like to work with that a little bit and we'll do this very special meditation and you have to eat the orange and the, uh, um, banana with your eyes closed. So it's very tantric. Yeah, so that's that's the little challenge. That's the big challenge is can you eat the orange and the you have to peel them and eat them with your eyes closed. No cheating. He was really he was really yelling at people. He was like, "You cannot open your eyes. You have to eat it with your eyes closed." Why do you think? Why do you think that's the case? Why do you think that's the case? Sensory. That's right. Cuz it develops a whole nother kind of ability for you to sense things. All of these exercises are developing a deeper sensory kind of experience in you. And that, and people are like, oh, fuck this. I'm leaving. (laughs) I am not, if there's one thing I'm not doing, I'm not eating an orange and a banana with my eyes closed. I have to draw the line somewhere. (laughs) 
I, 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 I respect that. Um, okay, are we ready? Let's do a little, what should we do? Let's do some cat cow, then we'll do that, that other, I guess we'll do that other meditation, but you guys have to, you have to take that now down the field. And I'd like you to focus on any, anywhere you need this kind of power of your own personal ability to elevate yourself, move yourself above some of the kind of Stretch up. Exhale, pull the navel, squeeze, arch. Inhale. And exhale, press back forward to the ground, palms together. And just a prayer for wholeness wherever you need the kind of knitting back together of your emotional body, your mind, your body, certain situations in your life. All of that is commanded by the psychomagnetic power of the heart. Inhale. And exhale. And come all the way up. You know, there's all these ways these things cross crossover I was reading this morning where did the Easter money come from and there was like a bunch of interviews with people you know kind of big figures in the church and all of them it hilariously are like um, we don't really know um, it's like nobody knows where the Easter money came from <laughs> but uh, uh, you know the goddess Ostra um, that is part of the, the fertility kind of thing is the Ostra and then they say the Passover was or the last supper was a pass was a Passover have you heard this yeah so you know I mean just it's good because in the Aquarian age religion is going to be it's it's totally different now um, it's changing and you can see it because you interview most in that same you interview most people under the age of a certain age they're going to come to a yoga class but they're not going to go to church so some so the the consciousness has to shift now so we, we get to receive all the benefits of these great teachers who came during this time um, called the age of Pisces to help us to move into another consciousness okay so we're gonna go like this you're gonna kind of go back and and you have to feel a little pressure at the belly you're kind of like sitting back like this and then the arms are kind of up like this and then we're gonna begin breath of fire heavy with the navel <laughs> 
So you're sitting back, heavy with the navel, and close the eyes. It's kind of an ecstatic posture. No stiffness in the arms. It's just kind of a really open. Fingers are open, hearts open. This Kriya is for self-renewal to strengthen these parts of you that are able to lift yourself up. All of us have certain innate strengths. We want to focus on those strengths and strengthen those strengths. the navel for me, really heavy. to us in the, the current condition of the culture and we have to develop this skill this power good now tongue out the mouth continue for the breath of fire over the tongue Stretch, stretch, stretch. 
stretch your armpits. Maximum stretch. Press the palms together. Stretch. The ribs, the rib cage. You're fighting gravity. Breathe. Stretch, stretch, maximum. Pull the mulabunda, rectum, sex organs, navel. Squeeze up, focus. Elevate, elevate. And exhale. Good. Now put this thumb on the ring finger mound of both hands and then close like this. So you're closing the fist and you're going to do, it's a, it's two things at once. So you're doing little circles backwards and then you're going up and down. And then the third thing is you're trying not to punch each other. We're a friendly, friendly bunch. So let's keep it that way. <laughs> okay. Ready? Really powerful up and down like that. To me too. Long deep breath, a powerful movement, up and down, backward circles, stretch, stretch the elbows, stretch the heart. Anything that feels broken to you, anything that feels fractured, fragmented, anything that you need the wholeness to come back into in your mind, in your body, in your life situations. I want you to breathe now and allow the power of the heart. This is the most powerful magnetic magnet you have. Right at the center of the chest. Now open it up and let it draw the broken pieces, the forgetfulness, the fear. Draw it back into wholeness. The self-renewal process is your own. No one can do it for you, and it must be done because this is a planet of polarity. This is a planet that has gravity, entropy, and the polarity is powerful. So you and you have to resurrect, renew, clean, baptize yourself, master yourself. Good. Keep going. Keep going. Come on. Get stronger. Deeper breath. Stretch and go. Go fast. These 30 seconds. Fast, fast, fast. Stretch, 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 squeeze the thumb, pull the mulabunda. Squeeze and stretch. And exhale. Left palm down, right palm up, and seesaw quickly, up and down. Balance the earth to heaven, the heaven to earth, the finite, the infinite. The right, the left hemispheres. 
all of the yogic sciences, the yogic traditions, the mastering of polarity. This is the definition of a yogi. Deeper breath, stretch the elbows. Balance, balance, balance. Now inhale and stretch. Squeeze every fiber, stretch. And exhale. Good. So the son of God and the son of God, S-O-N-S-U-N. They may have, you know, missed transliterated that one. It's the same thing. Son of God, son of God, S-O-N-S-U-N. So we're working with that sun energy so that you can be renewed because the heart is more powerful than 108 of our suns here in this uh, galaxy. So you have a lot of power. Okay, the thumb touches this mercury finger. And then you're going to put this mercury finger is the, the pinky finger. Okay, and then you're going to put this up like this. You're going to sit up tall. And you're going to close your eyes. And please look at the chin through the closed eyes. It's a power. It's a chakra. Look at the chin through the closed eyes. It's a chakra. Now your job here is to play out on the screen of the chin any fantasies, anything that comes up, everything and anything. You play it out on the screen of the chin. You see it, you play it out, and you go on to the next fantasy. This is a self-psychology, a self-healing, so that these fantasies stop playing around with your reality. Very, very consciously play out your fantasies, you and you, and clean your subconscious mind. Long, deep, slow breath. Space of the most neutral, non judgmental space. This is a self healing. Whatever comes up, play it out, see it fully, release it, clean it out of your mind. Fingers are open, the thumb touches the pinky mound.
deep in the breath. Exhale, inhale, hold the breath, squeeze and tighten every muscle. If this is perfected, these fantasies won't play out in your real life. They won't become the nightmares. Exhale, inhale, hold the breath, squeeze every muscle, squeeze, 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 squeeze. Please come up to your feet. Okay, you gotta move a little bit. Shake that into your body a little bit. Easter wouldn't be complete without a little bit of um, dancing to techno mantra music. Welcome to the Age of Aquarius. Eating a banana and orange with your eyes closed. You know, these are traditions. You got to shake, 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 move. Get serious about it. A lot of the pain and the kind of suffering can actually leave you now if you really shake it out.
Robbie's like Tipper Gore back there. He won't turn up my music. <laughs> We're gonna start calling you Tipper Gore, Robbie. <laughs> Take it out. Good, now sit down. Bring the hands like this right to the third eye, please. The thumbs together and the knuckles kind of right gently on the third eye, please. Inside this sound, all the great masters, all the great wisdom that ever has been, never will be on this planet. Oh. Chant. the breath, focus. Exhale, inhale, hold the breath. All of the ways that you're transforming Acknowledge yourself. Exhale. Inhale. Hold the breath. Sit up tall. Squeeze. headlining Bonnaroo Festival with Eminem. I mean, you know, just side note. I, I, sent, the, I sent it to Hoodie Jeeva and I was like, you know, me and Eminem are headlining Bonnaroo. No big deal. Um, <clears throat> so we have to do a bunch of remixes of the White Sun uh, songs for that. Any, any DJs in the audience? I'm, I'm looking at Ben back there. We, we, need, we, need, we need good remixes of the White Sun, uh, a couple of the White Sun tracks. Just letting everybody know. And if you're out there, let's get that happening because we, we need to, you know, bring the party. We're also doing meditations. What are they called, Shabapreet? 
Oh yeah, we're doing fed like on the big screens. Um, on the big screens on the main stage, I'm going to be teaching festival endurance meditations. No, but this is the age of Aquarius. They're finally getting that the kids don't want to just take ecstasy, you know, or GHB. Um, will you come up here once everybody has? Does everybody have an orange or and a, a banana? Everybody, raise your hand if you do not have one. Rachel's getting to you, but keep your hand up. <clears throat> okay, are we ready for this? This is some cool stuff that we're about to do. Okay. Hold your hand up if you need an orange or a banana. Okay. So like this, you're going to have your hands up. It's like, it's a little bit forward. So this would be like right straight. It's a little bit forward and a little bit up. He calls it an angel angle. He says, this is the angel, these are the angels. The angels open their armpits at a three-quarter angle. Did you know that? <laughs> you sit here. Okay. <clears throat> so it's like this. And then we're going to begin to tap the index and the thumb together. He says, like a neurotic, which you guys are good at. So <laughs> you don't need any more. <laughs> okay. You go. Quick. <laughs> I trust you on this one. I think you're going to do good. <laughs> okay, eyes are on the tip of the nose. This is called lunatic kriya. What, what should I say? They call, it, they call it pranic kriya, but we don't want to do, which is uh, the kriya, which is a very good kriya. But anyways, just move fast. Look at the tip of the nose and get hurt. You will get hurt in a few minutes, but you have, you have no nervous balance. I know you. What sex you can have, and you're nervous, and it's not real, and you can't control yourself. Elbows are straight. Move fast, look at the tip of the nose. Don't do anything for me, just do it for yourself and be miserable. First you will cheat, I tell you how cheat you are. First you will cheat, you will start to bend your elbows. I can bet on it. It means your stomach is out of the way. All right. Second, while doing so, looking at the tip of the nose, you're going to start getting crazy. That means your brain is not changing. The serum rate. I'm telling you something diagnostically. And you will say, hell, I should have not come to class, but <laughs> <laughs> but what brought you is the banana and the orange. <laughs> if I would have said bring two bananas and oranges, the whole system of creation should have been complete, but I'm just letting you have one banana, one orange, <laughs> so come on. <sighs> Put your eyes on the tip of your nose and go through the hell of moving this movement and see what happens to you and to your ego and how crazy you are. You don't tell your friend inside. Now you know. Within another two minutes, it will be known to you. Your palms are more up, uh, City Shakti, yeah. Fast, fast, fast. Jupiter and it are contacting fast. That's all it is. It's a Jupiter energy. It's a car. You know the spark plug? That's what you're doing. 
Now your reserve has to come up to support you or you have to fall apart. There's nothing in between I can do. But your ego ego will serve now. If your ego is good, and it really should be, all you have is ego, right? You should stick around. Just keep doing it. This is, this is where Yogi Bhajan talks about the positive ego. So just like get into it. All those people on Rama TV are watching you and not doing the meditation. They're just watching you, so... <laughs> we know what you're doing out there. Love it, romance it, date it, see this sex going on, imagine any negative thing you want, become naked, imagine, you know, everything is imagination, nothing you do is real, so why don't you imagine the dirtiest, the ugliest dream of yours, and keep doing it and see what happens to you, in another two months, you can't even imagine, your imagination will leave you, the biggest thing which making you crazy and doing the wrong thing, that, that will leave you, you will not imagine, These are self-psychology practices. Instead of trying to avoid it, you bring it up and you clean it out of the subconscious. Just in two more minutes, bet. Subconscious will be locked right there and then. Keep moving. The power of the Jupiter will take over your body and being, and that means pure, simple self-realization. You can go to self-realization and get their Kriya and wear those three medals and the whole thing, but right here, you can teach this to them, really. It's a purely self-realization. Now, you understand who you really are and what you pretend you are, and when you tell your friends you are, how much lies you speak. So come on, boys and girls, let us do it. Keep moving, elbows straight, angle just 60 degrees, move, 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 move. This is why you take drugs. This is a super drug. It is heroin for the heroes, not that other heroin you take and inject. This is the heroin of the heroes. Come on, get going. Suffer, suffer, suffer. It's the best thing you suffer tonight. I know, I know. It's going to be so fine. You will enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why you take the drugs. This is a super drug. It's heroin for the heroes, not that other heroin. The brain starts to make this pain relief. Now go to the middle finger and go. Same thing, tapping. Show the strength of yourself. Now it's, this is the relationship at this time between you and you. And now the sun finger, that's the ring finger, go. 
will be a little better. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I cried once. I did it myself. I remember it. And he, Yogi Bhajan's talking about his teacher. They spanked me with that bamboo stick. I can't forget. I didn't know how much pain is bigger than that, whether I should keep on getting the bamboo stick on my back or I should just keep on doing this. Finally... <laughs> they were not afraid of it and giving me more pain that way so I decided to just keep doing it I have I had a pretty good experience what it does to you in the end so don't worry Good. Now the pinky. Do that quick, really, really bad in us. This is this is which starts. It's our worst, which is our communication. We cannot compute right to answer things, and we cannot compute right to project project things. So let us get it over with. Fast, fast, fast. Come on. Hallelujah. Saints are marching in. Saints are marching in. <laughs> they sing that song. Ready? And when the saints go marching in, when the saints go marching in, oh Lord, I want to be in that number. When the saints go marching in. Okay, keep going, keep moving, keep moving. <laughs> now you, when you sing this kind of song that's what that's what it is to keep up otherwise if you don't call your saint saint now you just will fall apart so just halo become saints imagine being saints and saints are marching on come on do the number keep moving you have two more minutes to go come on put your elbows out don't worry about it you will have fun you will have a fun life after this. <laughs> I will give you worse and then this and then like this. Well, aren't you going to eat a banana and an orange after that? What do you mean? Everything is free. Move, move, move your pinky. The heart and the liver's in trouble. I'm telling you, don't wait. Don't look at me. These are meridian points. Come on, kids. We're in this last minute, come on. We are great, we are great. It's coming, it's coming to an end. 20 more seconds, that's all, no big deal. Ten more seconds, it's happening. <laughs> Watch it moving. Yes, 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 yes. All right, open all fingers, stabilize yourself, palms face out, and breath of fire. <laughs> It's called painless procedure against pain. It's a yogic way, not a medical way. All the fingers have to be open. Breath of fire, powerful, fast. Kill the whole disease in you. Breath should be continuous. <laughs> this is your life force. Like a cobra, kundalini, rise, rise. Heavy breath, heavy breath. Try it. Don't fake it. You will make it. Or fake it. You will make it. <laughs> Keep going. Palm facing front, 
fingers open, really powerful diaphragm, diaphragm, diaphragm. We're almost there. Inhale. Synchronize, synchronize, synchronize. Cannon fire. <laughs> Inhale again. Deep, 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 deep. We're getting rid of all the disease now. Deep. Open the ribs. One more inhale. Synchronize. Molecule to molecule. Part to part. Cell to cell. Cannon fire. <laughs> One more time. More, more, more. Open the ribs. Don't worry. It will adjust you. Now synchronize at the time of 16. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and let it go. Very good. Just relax. You've just built your own vitality. Now put this thumb here at the pinky mound and close. And now you're going to go uh, right in front of the heart. Right in front of the heart quickly. The top, we're moving away from the body, the hands. Tighten it up and go fast. Sit straight and go fast. It will stimulate the energy in all the body systems. This is the recuperation from your deterioration. We don't say it will heal. We don't say it will cure you. It will save you and save itself from further deterioration. Come on. Move in the fast rhythm. Faster you move, the more you will enjoy because you can let the energy go to every part of you automatically. It will happen. Mercury is under the touch with the id. It will communicate into the body. All right, fine. Look at me. Open your eyes. Open your eyes. Stop. Stop. Open your eyes. Okay, there you are. Now look at where the banana and the orange is. Okay, you know where it is. Now close your eyes and don't open them. Please sit in easy pose and with the closed eyes, you're going to peel your orange and your banana. Take the banana and find out your orange. Peel it and eat it. Throughout the system, you will not open your eyes. Go through it. It's fun. It's fun. No cheating in between. No opening a little bit of an eye and looking at where the banana is. Yeah, you're eating, you're on the clock. You have to eat it at a certain amount of time with your eyes closed. And he didn't specify that you, can, you eat them together like we have been in these other meditations, but just you have to eat them with your eyes closed. That's the only instruction.
And even if you're finished, you have to keep your eyes closed. That's the instruction. Just meditate if you're done, eyes closed. Keep the eyes closed and make the sound with the mouth. Heavier you, heavier you do it, the better it will be. It will freak you out, but 
all this TMJ trouble and everything else which you don't understand, you can create quite a noise. When a woman and a, a husband fight, if they make a decision that this is how they will fit, fight, nobody knows what they are doing. Both will get tired, then they'll laugh and go away. <laughs> Saints are popping up, yes. Press the lips, this will affect your jaw business, which is totally making you sometimes go crazy. It's gonna correct your TMJ. Trying to make that popping sound. Good, clap your hands, keep going. Good, and relax. Please relax and open your eyes. Very good job. We have one last thing to do. Let's see. Ya. Okay, good. Okay. So now you got to dance the shoulders. Dance the shoulders, shake the arms and armpits, move the shoulders, all the tension out. Regenerate the muscular capacity and fix your bones. Get rid of the tension. Really get rid of your tension, please. It's a very good time. We're going to really get a lot of tension out of your body, which is keeping you from enjoying your life. Don't feel shy. This is the good, healthy stuff. Tension out of the shoulder. This kills everybody. Get rid of this damn thing. Source of pain in your shoulders. It's an imbalance of sugar and sodium. So cut it out. Let's do it. You gotta break the tension. Move the arms and the ribs and the shoulders.
This is the last thing. You're going to feel really, really, really rejuvenated. Get all this tension out of the shoulders. Your eyes can be open or closed. You just got to move as much as you can. So this is not a meditation. It's a movement. You got to move, 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 move. That's the point. Good, and Jai Krishna, Suzanne, everybody keep going. You guys stand up, Shiva Preet. Everybody keep going. You can now, we'll give you something pretty to watch. You can, No, no, you face out and dance with your arms. No, no, with your arms. Just your arms. Everybody else, keep going. Keep going. You gotta move. Gotta move. Shiva Preet, it's like this. Move those shoulders, get the tension. That uptightness is not making anybody in your life happy, particularly you. There's nothing worse than being with uptight people. It's just so boring, so tense. And that uptightness is in your rib cage. Yogi Bhajan said, we're done, we're little slaves in our rib cage, our souls. He wrote a poem about it called The Dungeon of the Ribcage. Come on, move, 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 move. You're so uptight you can't even move. That's how uptight you are. You gotta move it. I want you to get free. Move those ribs, those shoulders. Get all the tension out, all of it, all of it. So you can leave here and be totally, totally open. This is your natural state. This is your innocent state. This is your birthright. You don't have to take drugs to make this happen. You don't have to do anything external to find a very, very deep bliss and openness. It's your birthright. This tension is a deposit in the body system. It numbs you, it kills you, it freaks you out, it gives you perpetual pain. Any tense moment created is a death itself. You understand that? Whenever you cause tension or you receive tension, you are absolutely not in control of yourself. Neither cause tension nor receive tension. That's what God is all about. I'm defining God in the Aquarian age. God now is when you are you and you're not tense. Not anyone can make you tense. No tension. You are young, flexible, just like a God, just like a child. That's God. And that is very perfect when you are you. 
that's God. That will be your experience when you just try to be you. Don't try to be somebody. Don't try to be nobody. Don't try to be anybody or everybody. Just be you. Don't betray the gift of God. Don't deny your identity. Don't cheap yourself by selling. All will come to you. Keep going, keep going. The last 90 seconds, just move. Get all this tension out, all of it. Last minute. Go crazy, go crazy, just get it out, 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 move it, move it. No great genius, no act of true love, no act of true compassion came from a state of tension. It's all about relaxation. That's the flow of God, that's the flow of life, that's the flow of you. Now move it, move it, move it, move it. you're done thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you and he actually said wow <laughs> that's how good you did wow bring the palms together inhale and exhale inhale May the long time sunshine on you all us around you and the pure light within you guide your way on guide your blessing the blessing of the morning light to you may it find you even in your invisible appearances 
May you be seen to have risen from some other place you know and have known in the darkness and that that carries all you need. May you see what is hidden in you as a place of hospitality and shadowed shelter. May that hidden darkness be your gift to give. May you hold that shadow to the light and the silence of that shelter to the word of the light. May you join all of your previous disappearances with this new appearance, this new morning, this being seen again, new and newly alive. David White. Satnam. Yogi Bhajan said that you have to drink enough water that it wakes you up tonight. He's like, I don't care if you believe in Muhammad and Allah, Jesus, Moses. He's like, I don't care what you believe in. You got to drink so much water that you get your God wakes you up in the middle of the night. Is that understood? So you have to really drink a lot of water to detox um, today. So drink, 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 drink a lot before you go to bed. And you got to you got to wake up to pee this evening, you know, this night to the next. Okay, so that's the plan. Right, you can at that point thank me for that. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, wonderful job. Uh, we'll be back here Thursday morning. Is that right? Thursday morning, April nineteenth. I'm, I'm not back on the eighteenth yes, yes. unless we ditch a flight in Venice. <laughs> I mean, there's this is a, this is a shady operation we're going on. Um, and if you're out there in Germany and Switzerland and Europe, we hope we see you soon, and we'll see you guys. It, Thursday, April 19th, here, Satnam.